It's Halloween and Donald Trump is demonizing Hillary Clinton but Rand on jobs will win votes in Michigan. After listening to people at a Trump rally in the Democrat stronghold, it becomes clear what rhetoric strikes a chord with those in America's hardest hit communities. It is Halloween, and I am standing at the front of a Donald Trump rally. What could be more terrifying? In addition to the carved pumpkins and fake cobwebs, there are people wearing Statue of Liberty costumes, draped in American flags, even some dressed as Trump himself. Videos play on repeat over big screens, showing Trump promising to win and demonizing Hillary Clinton. Again and again, those infamous emails come up. The crowd gets whipped into a frenzy. Lock her up. Lock her up, they chant, waving their Make America Great Again placards. At first sight, it appears to be everything I had feared. And yet, as I actually start to speak to people here, the Halloween horrors begin to disappear. Tim Ashburn has driven for almost an hour to see Trump speak. The retired engineer from a small town in Michigan would never normally bother with politicians, but the Donald, it seems, is different. He's got the right message, he says. He's right on immigration, he's right on jobs, he's right on the economy. It's all about jobs in Michigan. We used to be the capital of the automotive works and now it's gone. It went to China, it went to Mexico. Tim's verdict is repeated again and again as I mingle with the 7,000 strong crowd. People are angry. And they are angry about jobs. Michigan is a fascinating case study as one of a handful of swing states that will decide the next U.S. president. The state capital is Detroit, perhaps the ultimate symbol of the collapse of America's once proud industrial heartlands, which has fueled so much anger among the working classes. We are 150 miles west of Detroit, in Michigan's second city, Grand Rapids, the birthplace of boxer Floyd Mayweather. Michigan was once died in the wool Republican, but since 1992 has voted Democrat at every election. Trump is losing here, badly. Behind in every Michigan poll for the past month, he aims to turn things around by focusing almost exclusively on the economy. The message resonates with people like Tim who have witnessed firsthand how globalization has ripped the guts out of America's industrial sector. I was an engineer. I saw jobs shipped to China, so it hits home with me, he says. And it's not just retired folk backing Trump. Parents have brought children and grandparents. Groups of teenagers stand awkwardly in Trump, tense caps. And, weirdly for a political rally, people are thrilled to be here. They pose for selfies, they're laughing and cheering. The Trumpers genuinely believe they are on the verge of restoring America to some distant glory. And they genuinely believe Clinton should be in jail. Away from the economy, most of the rhetoric coming from the stage is the sort of hideous right-wing tub-thumping we've come to expect. The warm-up speakers hit out at abortion laws. They warn of being saddled with Clinton's Supreme Court judges for decades, and call her a crook. Others accuse Barack Obama of colluding with the Muslim Brotherhood. One tells us, Libya is a failed state. Iraq is a failed state. Syria is a failed state. There is no government to keep a lid on the radical jihadists. The national anthem is sung, placards are waved, allegiance is pledged to the American flag. Slagging off Mitt Romney and the two George Bushes is a popular pastime. The Republican Party makes labor look like a happy, united ship. We're treated to loud music as we wait for the main event. Sympathy for the devil is played twice. They should have a montage of Hillary pictures during this song, the woman next to me says. Sir Mick Jagger must be so proud. The last speaker tells us he wants to get back to the days of Reagan. Nostalgia seems to be a key currency here. Finally, over an hour late, Trump appears and the crowd go bananas. His speech is far too long and rambling, yet they lap it up. He rages about Clinton's emails, which he says will lead to her facing criminal charges. He rants about immigration and foreign policy and climate change. But he keeps returning to jobs and his hated free trade deals. We get nothing, he says, to roars of approval. We get losses and unemployment. We are living through the greatest job thefts in the history of the world and the people of Michigan almost more than anywhere else know that. The message is crude but powerful, and it works on this audience. And they are not all the undereducated working class we have been led to believe. Reed Turchetti, 28, an artist born and raised in Grand Rapids, says, I thought it was brilliant. His ability to speak the truth. Of course he's not a perfect candidate but he's really got people's heart. It's because he's not a politician, he's right there with the people. And that's the thing that's so beautiful. That's why you get thousands of people turning out. Suzanne Wickman is a mother of three boys. She's not worried about the locker room talk that has tarnished Trump in the eyes of many women. I don't care about that. It's not going to alter how he's going to run the country, she says. He's got the enthusiasm, he's got the power, he's got the heart to take this country and turn it around. As the crowd files out into the autumn sunshine at the end of the show, the excited chatter is that change is in the air. There are a lot of angry, disenchanted people in this part of the world, and many of them have latched onto Trump. 
as the latest national figures show Clinton ahead by just one percentage point, at 46% to Trump's 45%, the worry for the rest of the world is that Trump might yet ride this wave of anger all the way to the White House.